everything's bigger in Texas. And not just the hats. The second largest state in the United States is one of the most populous. It's such a powerhouse that many people have said it could be its own country. But what would that look like? And would it surprise you to know it already was? The early days of the US were rather messy, with 13 original colonies merging into one country and then rapidly adding states and land over the next 100 years. Not only that, but in the early days the continent was mostly divided between three European empires – the British, the French, and the Spanish – with the new United States jockeying for a position between the three and buying territory off them as needed. By 1821, Mexico had gained independence as well, and that meant that the United States had another country to contend with on the continent. They controlled what is now Texas. But independence fever was making the rounds and soon Texas won it out. This would kick off the craziest 10 years in the Lone Star State's history, and that is saying something. The Texas Revolution kicked off in 1836, as many of the colonists rebelled against Mexican rule. Of course, they weren't exactly altruistic. Many were slave owners and were outraged by Mexico's decision to outlaw slavery in a preview of what would be coming for the United States in 20 years. While the gritty fighters of Texas were able to outmatch the fledgling Mexican government, Mexico never acknowledged Texas as an independent nation and Texas claimed twice as much land as it actually had. But for all practical purposes, Texas was independent and smack dab in the middle of the hotly contested borders of Mexico and the United States. For now, the Lone Star flag would fly high. But it wouldn't last. After only nine years as an independent republic, the United States annexed Texas, and since the US still hadn't outlawed slavery yet, the residents were less resistant than they were to Mexican rule. This would kick off the Mexican-American War, which the US won decisively and expanded Texas territory as a state. But only 15 years later, Texas would leave once again, joining the Confederacy in the war that nearly broke up the United States. But amid all that and ever since, it's maintained a fiercely independent streak. Due to its large size and Wild West atmosphere, it has its own distinct culture and frequently feuds with the federal government. This territory has been ruled under six different flags – Spain, France, Mexico, the United States, the Confederacy, and its independent flag. And it's that last one that fascinates people today. So what would it look like if Texas was still independent? Well, if it had remained independent since the time of the 1830s, history would have changed dramatically since then. Both the US and Mexico would likely control less land than they do today, although it's impossible to know exactly what Texas's borders would have been. Before it was annexed, Texas was a strong ally of the US, although that might have changed in the aftermath of the Civil War. As a relatively new state with a lot of rural areas, Texas wasn't a major player in the Civil War, and most of the action took place closer to the East Coast. So the odds are that with an independent Texas, things would have played out in a similar fashion. But Texas might have remained a slave state a lot longer than the US did, possibly serving as a refuge for disgruntled Confederate soldiers. But how long could this last? Without a larger country backing it, Texas would have had to rely on its militias to keep itself independent. We all remember the Alamo, but that was a decisive loss for the Texans. And both the United States and Mexico would have had the new nation outgunned and outmanned. While the United States wouldn't have been likely to go after the territory immediately, tensions could have boiled over if Texas continued to be seen as friendly to the Confederacy. And it's likely tensions would have risen again with Mexico as the southern nation stubbornly refused to give up its claim to the territory. If Texas had managed to hold out for the next few decades, it likely would have been able to secure its independence long term. But it would look very different than it does today. Texas today is a massive melting pot with people from all around the country. It has heavily conservative rural areas, diverse and cosmopolitan major cities like Houston and Dallas, and everything in between. But without the connection to the United States, that likely never happens. Unless it's able to come to an agreement with the United States for open borders, its population would likely look much more homogenous. It's unlikely that Texas would have been able to hold on to slavery for more than a few decades after the Civil War. At that point, slave-holding countries were becoming increasingly isolated when it came to trade, and so eventually Texas would have likely had to figure out how to handle its population of freed slaves, and given how things went in the other Confederate states, it was likely to be a bumpy ride. Additionally, given Texas's proximity to Mexico, it would have likely had many people crossing over, so in some ways Texas might actually be more diverse than it is today if it was an independent country. 
but it wouldn't be the Texas we all know. Texas is what it is today because of heavy investments from the United States. Its agriculture and energy sectors are huge, it's a hub for the space program, and its tech sector is quickly evolving. Would any of that happen if Texas was independent since 1836? It often takes a big investment just to get oil flowing, and Texas would be starting as much more of an underdog than it did in our timeline. The odds are Texas today might look a lot more like Colombia, a country that harnessed its natural resources to enrich itself, but has a much more unsettled political climate and relies on a few key industries to make itself a player in the world economy. So the Texas we know definitely wouldn't exist if it had been independent since 1836, but what if it did? The last attempt at secession in the United States didn't go well for the secessionists, to put it lightly, but that hasn't been enough to put the idea of independence out of people's minds. There have been secession movements building in multiple states, including a proposal for the entire West Coast to secede and become a new country called Cascadia. But no independence movement has been louder and longer lasting than those who want to see the Lone Star State flag fly high once again and those true believers make the case that it's time for a Texit. Inspired by the United Kingdom's decision to break off from the European Union, they argue Texas is strong enough to make it on its own and not have to account for the United States' decisions. And on paper, they make a decent case. Texas is big, really big. While it's only the second largest state, the largest being Alaska, it has much more usable land and many more resources than that northern state. Texas controls a whopping 268,596 square miles with a massive coastline that makes up much of the Gulf of Mexico. This would make it the 39th largest country in the world between Zambia and Myanmar and ahead of over a hundred other countries. It would also dwarf every country in Central America besides Mexico, making it the fourth largest country on the continent. And in terms of population, it's even more impressive. Texas is the second most populated state in the United States, only beat by the very large California. And against the countries of the world, it's no slouch either. Texas has a population of 29.5 million people, which puts it within the top 50 countries. It's between Yemen and Nepal in population, while having much more real estate than either. This would make it relatively easy for Texas to be viewed as a world power if it was to become an independent country today. But it's money that talks, and so how does Texas stack up? Much like in the other two categories, Texas ranks second among all states in GDP, having a healthy mix of industries that make it a powerhouse. Its GDP is around $2 trillion, approximately one-twelfth of the United States' total GDP. The United States far outpaces any other country in GDP, and when you take Texas alone, its $2 trillion puts it in the top 10 for GDP. It would nudge Brazil out of the top 10 and sit comfortably behind Canada and Italy, and six spots ahead of its neighbor, Mexico. But would that be enough to keep it a sustainable nation? That depends on a lot of factors. For one thing, how would Texas gain independence? There hasn't been a serious secession movement in any state since the Civil War, for good reason. The states that try would likely be crushed by the federal government. The United States has always held the firm belief that the Union can't be broken, so any attempt to hold an independence vote would likely be shut down and ruled non-binding. Same goes for the Cascadia movement, but those people usually don't have the same Texas fire, which means that when Texas has its referendum and moves to make their independence official, they might be tempted to go a more direct route. So how would Texas fare in a second civil war? In short, probably not well. Despite being one of the most self-sufficient and well-armed states in the Union, they're still massively outgunned. Texas is home to 15 military bases, but that could wind up being a liability rather than an asset. Many of them are likely to side with the United States in any conflict and try to pacify the uprising from within. Assuming Texas could maintain the loyalty of its National Guard unit, as well as making use of its large homegrown weapons market, they might be able to field a pretty impressive militia. Even so, the success of the fight for independence would hinge on the US government deciding it would be better off leaving them alone because even the most effective band of Texas Rangers couldn't stand up to the full force of the US government. And then there's the other big Spanish-speaking elephant in the room. During the past Texas War for Independence, the country had major players on both sides of it. How would Mexico play into the battle for Texas this time? The country is a lot more established than it was back then, but it's also not particularly militaristic, mostly focusing its army on combating cartel activities within the borders. But Mexico doesn't actually need to get involved to cause Texas a lot of headaches. If the border between Mexico and Texas suddenly isn't as heavily guarded as the one between Mexico and the US, Texas will be fighting a two-front battle for its territorial integrity. 
And while the state-turned-country does have a wide variety of resources, a U.S. embargo could make it very hard for them to get what they need, speeding up the country's collapse. So Texas wouldn't be able to gain independence against the wishes of the U.S., and if they tried, it would likely be over very quickly. But what if the breakup was mutual? Let's say that tensions between the two political parties continue to increase. The states are becoming increasingly divided on issues including guns, reproductive rights, gay marriage, and how they conduct elections. Sounds far-fetched, right? Good times. As bad as things are now, they could get a lot worse. If the Supreme Court starts delegating more and more power to the states and allowing them to diverge massively on rights and freedoms, the integrity of the union could deteriorate and lead to open conflict. What happens when Texas wants the extradition of someone from New York for doing something that's legal in New York? A tipping point could come when a liberal president is elected and Texas Republican Party officially endorses independence, putting it on the ballot. And surprisingly, something similar happened before within the borders of our neighbors and allies. When countries have cultural differences, it's common for a movement to emerge calling for independence of a region with a different background. In the United Kingdom before Brexit, there was Skexit, a Scottish independent movement that held a vote in the region to declare themselves independent from Great Britain. It failed by a narrow margin, mostly due to heavy turnout from older voters. But in the wake of Brexit, pressure is growing for a second referendum. And in Canada, the French-speaking province of Quebec also has a powerful independence movement, although they remain a minority. In both countries, the government gives the independence movement legitimacy and their views are considered mainstream. Of course, that's not always the case. In Spain, when the region of Catalan declared independence, the government declared the vote illegal and ordered the organizers arrested. But let's say Texas got their wish. They're a political powerhouse and the United States decided they'd be better off without Texans. What now? Well, the first order of business is to determine what a Texas national government would look like. The good news is they have the basic foundation all set up. Like all 50 states, Texas's government is a microcosm of the United States. It has an executive and the governor who signs bills and issues executive orders. It has two legislatures that pass the laws and control the budget. It also has a state Supreme Court and lower judges that interpret the laws and have final say on any legal conflict. All these would stay in effect, and many of Texas's state laws would stay in effect in a new country. And naturally, Texas would be a pretty conservative country, right? The answer is yes, probably. Texas is known for its fiery right-wing leaders, like current Governor Greg Abbott, who would likely be the favorite to be the first president of Texas if the state gained independence now. But Texas isn't the most conservative state in the nation, nor is it the most Republican. In recent elections, it was common to see the Republican candidate win by only 5 to 10 points. Most famously, when charismatic liberal Senate candidate Beto O'Rourke came within a few points of becoming the first Democratic senator in the state since the 1980s. So politically, things might look fairly similar to how they do now, with Republicans having a major advantage. That is, assuming that everyone decided to keep the status quo. One of the biggest challenges for a new Republic of Texas would be working out their own constitution. Starting anew as a nation would mean determining what the public's rights are and how they would govern themselves, and they're under no obligation to keep any of the United States' protection. Some far-right figures might want to consolidate their power with some radical moves like raising the voting age back to 21 or imposing a longer residency requirement before someone can become a citizen or vote. Of course, that would result in major tensions with more liberal city centers like Houston, Dallas, and Austin, and we might even start seeing some of those enclaves voting to secede or rejoin the U.S. Turnabout is fair play, right? And there's one major reason why Texas might want to keep an eye on its status as a democracy. No nation is an island in today's globalized world, and very few countries don't have extensive trade agreements with other countries, especially those bordering them. One of the few exceptions is North Korea, the isolated dictatorship, and the result is extreme poverty and starvation for those inside its borders. Texas will quickly find out that as any new nation, it has to establish diplomatic relations with the world community, and with the United States and Mexico in particular. While the U.S. does have relationships with many countries that don't fit the definition of a democracy, it tends to be closer with those with similar governments, and it would likely use trade relations to put some pressure on Texas to maintain the rights of its people. Wait, what does Texas need from those Yankees anyway? To understand that, we need to take a close look at Texas's economy. It's strong and diversified, topping $2 trillion and ranking second among all states. But that doesn't mean it's self-sufficient. 
And while it's strong in some areas, it definitely relies on imports in others. The state has a reputation as a business-friendly location, thanks to its low tax rates and lack of a state income tax, and it would likely keep that model once it became independent. But to attract talent from outside its borders, people would need to feel safe there. One area where Texas wouldn't struggle is food. It has the highest farm acreage of any state and has the most farms in the United States. It's the top producer of cattle, hay, cotton, and other natural resources, with just chickens making up 10% of its agricultural sector. It also has access to good fishing waters in the Gulf of Mexico and a strong grain production sector. However, that doesn't mean it's foolproof. In the 21st century, Texas has been repeatedly hit by droughts, which have cost it billions of dollars in crops and livestock. Fortunately, it can fall back on its energy and mineral sectors. It's an oil-rich territory with known petroleum deposits of around 5 billion barrels. Its tech sectors are key to the nation's computer industry, and it would likely maintain possession of the Lyndon B. Johnson Space Center in the divorce, although it would lose access to NASA's network and intelligence unless it could work out an arrangement. More importantly, defense contractor Lockheed Martin has multiple facilities in Texas, and if the country could work out an arrangement, they'd be able to build up their own military very quickly. But the military needs something else. How would Texas build its own army? The Texas Army National Guard currently has around 19,000 soldiers, and odds are that as part of the withdrawal from the U.S., anyone who wanted to stay in Texas could be released from their obligations to the United States. Those soldiers, combined with any U.S. military members who chose to stay in the Republic of Texas, would form the foundation of a Texas military. But without the U.S. military to fall back on, the Texas military would be rather small for a state of its size. To build its ranks, Texas would have two choices. Put out a full court press recruitment drive to get people to sign up for good pay or institute a military draft. The former might put pressure on the new country's budget, but the latter wouldn't be too popular, destabilizing the new democracy. Fortunately, Texas wouldn't have many military obligations right away. Most of its troops would be dedicated to protecting its southern border. And the border would be one of Texas's biggest concerns right away. With Mexico to the south, the United States to the north, and a big coastline, maintaining its border integrity would be a challenge for Texas. However, maintaining it too well might also cost the new country. While Texas has many exports and could rely on them to maintain the integrity of the economy, it shouldn't neglect another big factor tourism. Sites like the Alamo, Galveston Pier, and Six Flags Over Texas bring in countless tourists every year, as do the major cities with their rich cultural and culinary scenes. It might be an independent country now, but Texas would still have millions of people wanting to visit it, especially from its former country. Many people might have relatives who are now in a different country, so Texas will have to decide if it wants a firm border with visa requirements, passport checks for visitors, or if it wants to arrange something with the U.S. that resembles the semi-open borders of the European Union. But it wouldn't be all sunshine and roses. Texas would be running its own economy now. And while it might continue to use the dollar like many countries do around the world, there would be a lot of uncertainty. The odds are, Texas's currency would become devalued due to skittish investors, which might make trading and purchasing imports tricky for a while. But this could also work in its favor. The cost of manufacturing there might become very low, and Texas's strong infrastructure would make it an appealing choice to invest in for foreign countries. That could boost its industrial and technological sectors, and its currency would follow suit in getting stronger. If Texas maintained its economy and plugged ahead with its independence experiment, it would soon be time for it to step onto the world stage. That's right, it's time for Texas to take its seat at the United Nations. Virtually every state with near-universal diplomatic recognition is allowed to be a full member at the UN. And the only way to prevent this is a veto from a permanent member of the UN Security Council. As for Texas to gain independence in the first place, it would likely need some level of agreement from the United States. It's likely nothing would be standing between the new country and UN membership. Texas would be an immediate powerhouse on the world stage given its large population and economy, and its government's politics would likely make it an ally of the global right. It would probably become known for being strongly pro-Israel and highly critical of communist countries like China. But would it be stepping on the world stage in other ways? For at least the first decade of its independence, Texas would likely stay out of world affairs in one big way, military intervention. Barring a World War III scenario, Texas's military wouldn't be large enough for it to commit anything overseas. However, it would likely become a major supplier of military hardware, and in a war such as the one ongoing currently between Russia and Ukraine, Texas might become a reliable location to purchase weapons and tanks at a lower price than the United States. But would this new state be sustainable long term? 
Texas is probably better positioned to be an independent country than any other state in the Union. But starting a new country is tricky, and any number of things can go wrong. The biggest danger to an independent Texas is a diplomatic crisis with the United States, which could easily make its life hell by placing an embargo on the new country and getting its allies to join in. This could tank Texas's economy in a hurry, exacerbate the unrest, and potentially bring the new country to the brink of collapse. And if that happens, odds are the US would be ready to bring the experiment to an end and welcome the prodigal son back into the fold. But what if it wasn't just Texas? Check out What If The US Broke Up for a look at what would happen if it was 50 different countries. Or watch What If Japan Hadn't Surrendered in World War II for another crazy hypothetical.